Mark was appointed Deputy Managing Director for Human Rights, Global and Multilateral Affairs at the European External Action Service, the EEAS, which we're probably more familiar with it. Um, he has worked for many years in foreign affairs, so he is a diplomat supreme. Um, most recently, he was Ambassador at Large for Reconstruction and Development, dealing in particular with post-crisis situations. Now, when you hear that word post-crisis situation, is there ever a time when we're actually post-crisis? Are we not always in one, just left one behind or about to start a new one? Um, so, so that was a difficult enough position. He has had, he has, he's had he's a very, very uh, exemplary CV here. And um, I noticed that he was with the United, the director for the United Nations and international organizations, head of international affairs, at the Ministry of Spatial Planning and Environment. And what Mark is going to talk to us today is about the external aspects of migration. On the 1st of January 2016, the number of people living in the EU 28 countries who were citizens of non-member states was 20.7 million people, while the number living in the EU 28 who had been born outside of the EU was 35.1 million. So, you know, all the countries, but some of them in particular, have very large numbers of people who are not born in the country they're living in. And with that comes a whole set of policies, financial commitments, uh, language, education, all the things that you can imagine. Obviously, Germany has 8.7 million, the United Kingdom 5.6 million, Italy 5 million, Spain 4.4 million population of Ireland, France 4.4 million and so the non-nationals in those countries make up 76% uh, of the total numbers but it's, it's still an issue and though it may be quiet at the moment we're very pleased today that Mark can come and talk to us and bring us maybe up to date on what is happening in the EAS because you have a huge responsibility in this so it's over to you now Mark. Thank you very much, uh, good afternoon everyone. Um, I will say, I, I read what you, you wrote about what you were expecting from me. Yes. So, uh, uh, first, the role of the ES, yes. uh, and why such a focus on migration? Um, of course, it's rather obvious, because uh, with the wake-up call of uh, uh, 2015, uh, migration became a, a major uh, element of our foreign diplomacy. Um, since then, migration has always been the first theme of every European Council. So that shows uh, uh, the importance of the, of the issue uh, for uh, uh, our leaders and for our uh, public opinion, of course. Um, so migration is also, along with human rights, one of the priorities of uh, the European Union global strategy, which is for foreign affairs and uh, security, which is uh, our Bible. It, it was uh, uh, issued in uh, June 2016, and it's, it's guiding, let's say, the European uh, Action Service uh, uh, works. So, um, basically, uh, the ES, in implementing the global strategy, uh, puts a particular emphasis on migration. We have a dedicated division uh, on migration in uh, my directorate, the Directorate for Global Issues, which was not the case uh, two years ago. I mean, it's, it's really new. I mean, we, the, the, the division was in charge of human security at large, I mean, which was a, a much broader subject. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, even for the ex external aspects, the ES uh, being the diplomatic arm of the, uh, diplomatic arm of the, uh, of, uh, the European institutions, has to work hand in hand with the Commission, and notably uh, DEFCO, uh, the, the in charge of the development assistance near the neighborhood, uh, OM, the uh, Home Affairs, and uh, just, uh, Justice. Uh, so, so, for example, because there are others, of course, but these are the main, uh, let's say, contributor to, uh, uh, to uh, the issue of uh, migration, including its ex external aspects, because, of course, we need uh, development assistance, we need more technical assistance from uh, uh, these different uh, uh, DGs of the, of the Commission. Then the second question, uh, which comes uh, naturally to, to the mind, is why such a focus on Africa? 
the, the answer is also obvious. I mean, in 2015, the Turkish route was uh, uh, the main preoccupation, uh, but we managed to get an agreement with Turkey, and let's say, st uh, since that time, the uh, uh, agreement has worked relatively well. Uh, and of course, uh, the issue was limited. Uh, I don't know if you have the, the word in English, but it was an epiphenomenon, a, a, a yes. specific phenomenon, phenomenon which, which is not, is has a certain significance, of course, but is not, uh, let's say, uh, is a bit the a limited uh, uh, element of the puzzle. Um, so immediately, the, the idea wa was. Uh, uh, the, the, the real challenge is uh, the South, our southern neighborhood, Africa. Uh, and uh, there was uh, a summit uh, uh, immediately uh, uh, organized with uh, the African Union in Valletta, end of November, uh, where the main theme was migration uh, and trying to create a partnership between Europe and uh, Africa on migration. Um, since then, we've been working with the Valletta Trust Fund, with the partnership framework. I will, I will uh, elaborate on that. Um, with uh, with a, 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 spe specific, a special task force uh, dedicated to Libya, which is a very uh, specific case uh, on um, on the, the issue of the migration coming from Africa. Uh, but that doesn't mean, of course, that we uh, uh, are, uh, let's say, uh, disregarding the broader picture, because uh, not only we still have an issue with migrations from the East, uh, mm. potentially Syrian uh, refugees who are still in uh, the neighboring uh, uh, countries such as uh, uh, Turkey, uh, Lebanon, uh, uh, Lebanon or, or Jordan, uh, but also we have uh, rather important numbers of Iraqis, uh, Afghans, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis who are trying to uh, to uh, move to, uh, to Europe uh, without, uh, let's say, uh, necessarily uh, uh, having the necessary legal uh, mm -hmm. uh, status for that. Uh, so we have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, put that issue on the agenda of our uh, rela bilateral relation with all these countries. For example, recently we, we had a summit in Brussels with Afghanistan and the issue of readmission was, there was a commitment from the Afghans to, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, let's say, uh, proceed in that regard. Uh, with Bangladesh recently, we had also uh, a bilateral summit where the issue of what we call the standard operating procedures for readmission uh, led to an agreement too, etc. So uh, it's important to, uh, to end, last point, uh, we have uh, uh, made sure that the issue of migration uh, be uh, dealt with at the global level. Uh, and you, we, there were two declarations in, uh, in New York uh, last year, in 2016, one on refugees and one on migrants. And we are now negotiating compacts. Uh, uh, and for us, the, the key words in the, in the negotiation of these compacts are shared responsibility and solidarity. This is not only the, a responsibility for Europe, this is an issue for the world at large. Of course, we are more vulnerable than other uh, countries, but uh, uh, there should be, let's say, a, legal, a global uh, legal framework for, for uh, the, the, the issue of uh, refugees and, and migrants. Refugees, of course, upholding the Geneva Conventions and respecting uh, their, their status, while at the same time, uh, let's say, uh, uh, trying to avoid uh, abuses of, the, of this uh, status and uh, and uh, migrants uh, to uh, 
let's say, uh, have a framework uh, for uh, legal migration and, uh, and let's say, uh, basic principles for um, the way uh, uh, these migrations are, these migration are treated. Um, so, now I come to the point. So, that was to, to show you that, uh, of course, we are not considering only the issue of Africa and the central Mediterranean route. It's a, it's a global strategy, uh, and uh, we uh, uh, are trying to uh, first respond to the urgency of the situation uh, in, our, in our southern border, but at the same time, trying to uh, work on a long-term basis with all potential uh, actors in, uh, in, in that regard. Um, so, I come to my last and most important part, point, what uh, are we currently doing? First, uh, what, what I shall say is that our first short-term goal, goal is to save lives uh, and to, uh, uh, and, uh, let's say, uh, to protect uh, uh, the uh, human rights of the people uh, involved uh, uh, in migration. Um, save lives, uh, you've heard probably about the situation of Libya. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult situation uh, since, uh, uh, as you know, uh, there are competing, uh, competing authorities in the country and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the, uh, the situation is rather chaotic. In that context, what have we done? We have first deployed Operation Sophia in order uh, to uh, uh, let's say, help uh, people uh, who are uh, trying to cross uh, uh, the, the Mediterranean Sea in uh, international waters. And then there is the issue of the Libyan uh, territorial waters. So uh, we, we uh, have a program of, uh, with the uh, Libyan Coast Guards where we train them and try to uh, assist them in terms of material, etc. Uh, this uh, cooperation has been criticized by uh, a number of NGOs and also, uh, by the way, uh, and our action in Libya by the UNHCHR in its last report. Uh, but it should be clear that uh, even if the current uh, way uh, the Libyan Coast Guards are operating is not always perfect, what we are trying to do is to have, let's say, uh, uh, a better functioning system, uh, that they are trained and equipped in the right uh, manner. And uh, uh, we, we had recently a, a press conference in uh, Brussels this week, beginning of the week, with UNHCR and IOM, the uh, UN organizations, uh, agencies uh, working with us. And uh, the representative of the UNHCR insisted that he thought it was the right thing to do. And uh, it's, all, all, it's a kind of situation where uh, you are in a difficult situation where whether you do something or you do nothing. But, uh, but uh, uh, it, w it was clearly of the opinion that it was the good way to save lives at sea. Um, then there is, of course, the issue of what's happening in Libya proper. Uh, then, in this case also, we are uh, trying to assist as much as possible the migrants in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the most difficult situations, which are basically uh, migrants in detention centers. There are some tens of thousands of them out of up to one million migrants in Libya. But most of them are, uh, have been in Libya for a long time and are well integrated. And even if, of course, they suffer as uh, the Libyan people of the current situation, uh, most of them uh, are not in, uh, in uh, uh, let's say, humanitarian situations. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the camps, there is a serious problem. Uh, are, most of them are, are run by the militias and, and not, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we had very uh, reports of, uh, of, uh, of some of them living in very difficult conditions. So we, uh, so UNHCR and IOM uh, accepted to, to work with us. Of course, we, we finance them, we support them uh, within the camps that were accessible to them, because you have to 
be conscious that only a part of those camps are accessible to uh, UNHCR and IOM. And of course, in these camps, uh, UNHCR and IOM first monitor what's happening and second uh, uh, assist people in, the, in that situation, try to convince them that uh, they would better uh, come back to their own countries. And by the way, when they're interviewed, apparently 80% of them want to, to, uh, to go back to, to their own countries. So, uh, so it shows also that uh, a better knowledge of what's awaiting them if they, if they go uh, that path is, is, uh, is a, an important element of a, of a solution to, uh, to the problem of uh, illegal migration. Um, so basically, that's what we can do in the short term. And of course, we have also the possibility in the short term to try and uh, dissuade people to uh, go through the route uh, before reaching Libya. For example, in, in Niger, where uh, we are helping uh, uh, the Nigerian authority to, uh, uh, to patrol the border and, and, and try and, uh, let's say, uh, uh, what we uh, call uh, 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 let's say, uh, destroy the, the uh, business model of the smugglers and traffickers mm -hmm. uh, by making their life so difficult that they, 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 they can't operate. Um, so that's our objective in the short term. In the mid-term, we uh, are trying to stabilize the situation by helping uh, countries of origin and transit in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, that is, uh, the, I would say, the core of the Valletta Plan of Action, uh, where the idea is both to secure borders, fight the traffics, and by the way, uh, uh, try to uh, uh, help them uh, uh, securitize the, the, the <coughs> zone, because it's also about uh, fighting terrorism. We, we mustn't forget that uh, they, in, in this operation, there could be a win-win-win, which is uh, uh, less irregular migration and, and less migrants at uh, risking their uh, life in the, in the process, uh, uh, better uh, results in terms of counterterrorism, and better development of these countries because security is the first condition for, for, for their development. So we are helping uh, uh, these countries uh, in helping their military, their, um, uh, their policemen and uh, their justice system in order for them to uh, better control uh, their border, uh, have the possibility of uh, efficiently fighting uh, the smugglers and traffickers, um, and also uh, creating awareness, raising uh, among the population, awareness among the population about what they're risking by migrating. So there are IOM centers mm -hmm. uh, in order to that people get information if they are only <coughs> are starting their migration route, uh, offer them possibilities to go back and resettle, etc., etc. Uh, and of course, uh, there is uh, uh, also. Uh, uh, and a very important part, and our African partners uh, uh, are, are very uh, uh, insistent on that, and they're right, is uh, fighting the root causes of migration, you know, offer, offering job and, uh, uh, economic, uh, jobs and economic opportunities. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, it's an important part of, uh, of the actions of the Valletta Trust Fund, uh, helping the... Uh, agricultural sector to develop, uh, uh, training people, uh, uh, etc., etc. Uh, this uh, this uh, takes place in a, in a fund which is supposed to be an emergency fund, which means that uh, the idea has been to uh, reduce as much as possible the time lag between uh, the conception of the project and uh, uh, its uh, uh, it's, uh, let's say, implementation on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, for your information, uh, we've already <coughs> committed 2 billion uh, euros uh, of the Valletta Trust Fund, 
which is more than what was the initial amount of the Valletta Trust Fund, but now the amount is almost three, mil three billion, so we, we still have one, mil uh, one billion to, to, uh, to commit. And uh, the, uh, uh, the disbursements are proceeding a bit more slowly, of course, we are talking about development assistance, but we are already close to 500 million euros, so things are, uh, are uh, going quite fast if you consider that the first projects were, uh, were adopted uh, beginning of 2016. Mm -hmm. The Valletta plan, plan of Action should be uh, implemented uh, during the phase between now and uh, between 2016, let's say, and 2020. Mm -hmm. the idea, so it's a, it's a kind of mid-term uh, response. Uh, and the, the long-term uh, answer to, uh, to our uh, uh, to, to, to the migration issue and the, the, the phenomenon of uh, uh, irregular migration is, uh, is twofold. First, we have the partnership, uh, partnership framework, which is, as I said, between the mid-term and the long-term, because it was uh, it's an idea which uh, was developed within the Valletta Plan of Action. At a certain point in time, some of our member states said, well, it's very good to help people and uh, give them uh, uh, job opportunities, etc. But, and also it's very good to help, uh, and it's in our interest, of course, helping uh, uh, the, the, the police, the military, and the justice of these countries. But what are the guarantees that these countries we help us in terms of readmission of irregular migrants mm. and that kind of thing? So the idea was we need something which is, uh, which is a bit more, uh, let's say, uh, targeted and, uh, and identify some countries where we have a strategic interest uh, and we're engaging into a, a dialogue, a political dialogue with the country, putting, let's say, every card on the table, will lead us to uh, more and, and uh, more concrete and, uh, let's say, deeper results as regards uh, uh, the issue of, of migration. So we identified first uh, five countries, Senegal, Mali, Niger, uh, Nigeria and uh, Ethiopia uh, for these partnership uh, frameworks. Um, we uh, have already obtained impressive results with Niger, uh, notably uh, as regards what's happening in the region of Agadez, which is the region uh, bordering Libya. Uh, the, pr the problem of Niger is not really a, a problem of migration from Niger, because mm -hmm. uh, um, Nigerians tend to migrate to Nigeria, but not, uh, or, or, or uh, elsewhere in Africa, but uh, very there, there is a very limited migration flow uh, of uh, Nigerians to, uh, to Europe. But, uh, but it's a tra transit country, and uh, the, the, the route, uh, the central, uh, uh, Mediterranean, uh, Mediterranean route basically was a route uh, crossing through Niger uh, to uh, Libya and uh, and then to uh, to the Mediterranean. So uh, we we managed to uh, to to work with with a very uh, let's say uh, uh, good willing let's say uh, Nigerian government. Uh, who, who to, uh, the, the, the president told us basically uh, uh, we are ready uh, to do our best. We consider that we cannot thrive on a, on a traffic economy, obviously, because uh, uh, but we have a problem uh, in the region of Agadez. Uh, the legal economic activity is, is very limited. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a desertic region. Uh, Almost desertic, let's say, uh, where uh, uh, which which has suffered uh, badly of uh, desertification in the in the previous decades, and where also the the population uh, uh, is growing and and uh, uh, cannot get uh, easily sustainable uh, livelihoods. Uh, so, um, worked with them, 
helping them patrolling the zone, uh, uh, mounting also what we call joint investigation teams in order to uh, identify where, where the traffic took place and who was responsible for the traffics. And, um, and also we worked with uh, the local authorities in order to, uh, <coughs> to identify development projects in the, in the zone, in the area. And I must say we had very good results in terms of uh, the, the flow uh, diminished drastically. Uh, 2017 compared to 2016, it's it's been uh, reduced uh, four to something like four times, uh, uh, and uh, and also uh, the Nigerian authorities uh, began to uh, actively uh, 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 combat uh, uh, trafficking and. Uh, I think more than 100 uh, smugglers and traffickers were condemned uh, in year 2017. Their uh, uh, vehicles seized, etc. Uh, so, so this is uh, beginning to show uh, real results. Um, and also, we have organized from Agades, of course, centers uh, managed by UNHCR, a a a IOM, etc., in order to uh, offer opportunities for those want to come back and resettle to come back to their uh, country of origin, mm. uh, helping them financially and, uh, and also assisting uh, them in terms of uh, information, uh, offering them possibilities of training, etc., etc. So uh, that's a good example of what a partnership framework could offer. With other, uh, the other countries, the results are more mixed. We are uh, currently negotiating, for example, a, a readmission admission uh, re readmission agreement. Sorry, with Nigeria, uh, we are having discussions on uh, also uh, uh, with uh, Senegal and and uh, uh, Mali on that issue. Uh, there is the issue of also of the standard procedures for readmission. Uh, we had uh, we have been able to uh, to. Uh, uh, with the Ethiopian authorities to, to uh, obtain readmission for a number of cases where it was clear that uh, some of the uh, illegal migrants we had caught were their citizens. But of course, uh, this is more difficult because we, uh, these countries are, are can not only countries of transit but countries of origin. So they have a vast population of people uh, having migrating or contemplating the possibility of migrating uh, and uh, they are representing uh, important lobbies uh, at home and, and, and it's, uh, we have to, to consider that. I mean, uh, countries like Senegal and Mali, for example, are democracies and uh, uh, they have to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to balance uh, their uh, uh, the, the risk of, uh, of uh, uh, let's say, a tougher uh, migration policy. Um, we, uh, we nevertheless think it's a good, uh, it's the good approach because uh, uh, only, let's say, a 360 approach, uh, uh, which is about having a strategic uh, partnership with, this, uh, with uh, these countries, can provide a solution to the problem of irregular migrations. These countries uh, uh, get a lot of uh, money from remittances, obviously. So it's not only about development assistance compensating for their remittances, because we don't have the, the amounts necessary to do that. But uh, at the same time, at the same time, they're afraid uh, of what's happening in terms of security. Uh, they want our assistance in that regard. They're willing to have a good relation uh, uh, with Europe in general, uh, and if we can uh, offer them the prospect of economic development, uh, uh, they, they will certainly be uh, be interested. So uh, uh, that's let's say the gist of uh, what uh, this uh, partner <coughs> partnership uh, framework concept is: is that migration should be should not be something. Uh, uh, dealt with a part, but it's 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 a part of a broader picture of our uh, uh, relations with these uh, with these countries. Mm -hmm. um, and last, uh, what we are currently doing for the long term, 
uh, is the external investment plan. I don't know if you heard about uh, this new instrument in our toolbox. It's um, uh, the idea is to uh, use the leverage effect of loans. Um, so uh, we are currently committing uh, four uh, four point one billion euros for Africa and the neighbourhood, um, and this uh, for uh, a bit more than four billion uh, euros should be able to mobilize in total around 44 billion euros. Uh, we have, let's say, mainly uh, two, two main uh, instruments. One is the, what we call blending. Uh, we, by topping up uh, money coming from the private sector, we lower the cost of the loans and allow projects in terms of infrastructure, for example, to develop. And that's the first part. It's not the most original one that existed already. And, uh, and the second one is the guarantee. So uh, we have what we call the European Fund for Sustainable Development, which is providing uh, a guarantee to uh, private initiatives uh, by, um, or let's say, <coughs> market initiatives, because you can imagine to have uh, uh, companies with public ownership, but uh, which are uh, developing. The idea is developing, creating jobs and opportunities, but in a larger scale, as, uh, as uh, is the case in the, in the Valletta plan of action. Uh, so you can consider that Valletta is, uh, let's say, when it deals with uh, developing jobs, etc., has a more limited spectrum, of course, and uh, is more pilot in the, in the sense that we know that uh, what we do in terms of creating uh, jobs and opportunities within the Valletta framework, uh, within the Valletta plan of action, uh, is not at the height of what is necessary. But with the uh, European Investment Plan, we can go further by offering uh, a guarantee to the private investor, we can, uh, and by differentiating the level of the guarantee uh, according to the respective situation of different countries, because of course uh, it's much more difficult to invest in Niger than it is to invest in Côte d'Ivoire or, so, or South Africa. Mm. <laughs> so uh, uh, we, uh, we think we will uh, be able to, uh, to create opportunities. And it's very important because we still have uh, a very important problem, which is a very uh, politi politically a very delicate one, is the, uh, the demographic boom that uh, Africa is uh, uh, currently experiencing. Uh, and it's interesting in that regard to note that the uh, country with the highest birth rate in the world is Niger, with almost eight children uh, per woman. Uh, and Mali is not far from that, is with, with seven. So uh, that uh, means that probably it's another issue we will have to address in the long run. Of course, we know it's a delicate issue. Uh, the local governments are, uh, are progressively uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, becoming conscious of, of the demographic time bomb they, mm. uh, that, is, uh, uh, that they have on their shoulders. Um, in the case of Niger, it's, it's interesting because President Isufu uh, said that it was a, a really important issue and uh, he will have to, uh, it will be one of his priorities during his last. Uh, 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 discours d'investiture, I mean, the, the, the speech he, 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 he made well for, for his new uh, term in the, in the Nigerian presidency. So, so uh, that's not part of the uh, current issue, that's not part of Valletta or etc., mm -hmm. but it's something to keep in our mind uh, uh, when a, a country like Niger, with limited natural resources, has a population which doubles every 16 years, there is a problem. <laughs>